Okay, that's bulk collect. That's that's nice, but for all is way way better. So with for all, the idea is that when you're inserting, update, or deleting thousands upon thousands of rows, you need some really good performance. And Oracle offers a lot of different ways to do it. You can use SQL Loader and Direct Path Loading and all sorts of different things. But if you need to do PL SQL manipulation of your data before you push it back to the database, you can run into some really slow performance when you're looking at row-by-row row operations. So what you can do is say goodbye to those for loops when you're iterating through the rows, cursor for loops and numeric for loops, and instead use the for all statement. And for all is more of an extended DML statement. And here's actually the best story I ever heard about for all. Um, every year, OGTUG and I co-sponsor essentially a, a PLSQL conference, a two-day conference just on PLSQL. The next one is coming up actually uh, next week in Atlanta. So you can go to ogtugopp.com if you want to check that out. But at the first one we ever gave, a woman came to the, the, the training and said that, I, w I wrote a program that took two weeks to complete. It would actually run for two weeks. And oddly enough, her manager said, uh, could you make it go faster? So she said that all she did was go back and use collections and for all and bulk collect and brought the performance down to 20 minutes from two weeks. That's really amazing, isn't it? And it, it really is a true story, well, at least whatever she told me, I'm telling you. Now, you won't often see that kind of benefit. That pr pretty clearly indicates a badly designed program. But you can easily see programs taking minutes down to under a minute in seconds just by using for all. Let's take a look at some examples. So what I'm going to do here is run through four or five different ways of inserting data into a table. So I'm going to compare inserting techniques and inserting into a variety of different kind of parts tables, part number, part name. Again, I'll be working with collections, in this case, nested tables. And what I'm going to do is populate my tables, my collections, with a bunch of data, however number of rows I specify. And then I'm going to look at different ways of doing inserts. So first of all, I'm going to do a for loop insert, row by row, insert that row into the table, which is probably the kind of thing you often see in your code when you're doing bulk loading. Then I'm going to compare that to this great new feature. Now, when I say new, actually, I should be honest, this is an Oracle 8 I feature. It's been around for a long time. But lots of PLSQL developers are so busy just staying on top of their user requirements that they're never given the opportunity to learn more about the language and really absorb the new feature. So it's an old feature, but it's new to a lot of people still. And it looks a lot like a for loop, but there's no loop or end loop statement. And I simply say, take this insert statement and take this these different bind arrays and explode them out into multiple insert statements and push them all to the database all at once instead of going back and forth row by row. So I'll try that. We'll see how it compares. And then just to continue our exploration of different ways of doing these kinds of things, I'm going to do an insert into my table select star. Now, there are a couple ways you can do a select star. The first one I'm going to show you here is maybe something you also haven't seen before. I'm going to take a nested table, an array that I've populated here. There are my parts number and parts names. And it's a collection that looks the same as the parts table itself. And I'm going to select from it as if it were a relational table. So I can put my nested table, my collection, inside the table operator. And that tells Oracle, treat this as if it were a relational table. And then I can select from it and insert into my parts table. Maybe that's even faster than doing for all. Then I'm going to try with a direct path append. At least I was told this would be direct path hint. Uh, one of the students in my last class in uh, Zurich just asked me to try this one, so we added it in. And then, I'm going to do pretty much the standard insert select. So I'm going to create a second table, or I'm going to populate the parts table, and I'm going to insert into the second parts table doing an insert select. So this is literally a SQL only insert select. And we'll see how long it took to do that, 100% SQL. And then finally, I will compare my insert select, native insert select in SQL, with a select bulk collect, get me all the data from the database, put it in my collection, and then push it back into another table with for all. So these two are pretty much the corollary. Get from one data set, put it into the other. And these others are more straight inserts. Obviously, this is a lot to throw at you. But uh, again, I just want to give you a quick, quick demonstration of the power of this feature, and also a, a nice demonstration of how you can use these timer utilities to compare four, five, 10 different implementations and see which ones really are the best. All right, let's see.
So I'm going to run this for 100,000 rows of data. Let's get rid of the existing output. And let's run it again. I don't think this will take too long. Hopefully not. Maybe a couple more seconds. While it's doing that, up, oh, there we go. Okay, so let's see. First of all, for loop row by row. Row by row insert of 100,000 rows, four seconds. Now check this out. For all statement, 100,000 rows, 0 0.09 seconds. That's incredible. And all I did was change the PL SQL code that pushed the data from the, from the collections back to the database from my session or PGA memory back to the SGA. Okay, insert select from nested table. So that did this really cool table operator that converted my, my nested table into a relational table format. Not bad, 0.43 seconds compared to four seconds. The direct path really didn't make much of a difference here because it really is all happening within the PL SQL layer. The SQL engine is, is pretty much going the same. Now, this is interesting. My insert select, 100% SQL, selecting from one table, moving it to another, was the fastest. Actually, pretty much the same as the for all statement. But remember, it was doing a select and an insert. So if you can stay with an SQL and do your insert selects without having to go out to PL SQL and do anything programmatically, you're almost always going to get the best performance. And look for opportunities to do that. But check it out. Bulk collect for all. Fetching 100,000 rows from the back end, putting it into a collection, pushing it back to the database using for all, 0.22 seconds. So it's definitely slower than insert select but it's not very slow. It really competes well. So there's a lot more to say about for all, exception management, retrieving information about the statements that you've executed. It's a very interesting topic, and I explore it in great detail in the training. But hopefully it's really clear that this feature is incredibly powerful and is something you should be looking to apply throughout your application wherever possible. And one thing to note here is that while bulk collect Oracle was really cool about automatically optimizing the, for, the cursor for loop into bulk collect-like performance. You will not get that same kind of automated conversion and optimization process with a for loop. In other words, here's a cur an numeric for loop, and it could be a cursor for loop as well. Go for every row and do my insert. It will never, ever optimize this code into a for all statement. There are too many potential side effects when you're doing DML. And Oracle has to make very sure that when it optimizes the code automatically, it doesn't have any side effect changes your code logically does everything exactly the same way it did it before. So look for those opportunities. Choose for all. It'll be one of the biggest boosts in performance you can ever get in your PL SQL code.